Space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of a new Trekkie. My five year mission to search out Star Trek media, to seek out our fans and merchandise, to boldly go where no fan has gone before. Greetings and salutations, so we're back to look at Star Trek Enterprise. In this case, we're looking at the episodes Dawn, Stigma, and Ceasefire. Let's go look at the episode Dawn first. What happened in this episode? Well, in this episode, Commander Trip Tucker's shell pod is fired upon by an Arconian's ship and is stranded on a desert moon with his attacker. As dawn comes on the moon, the temperature increases beyond what the characters can survive. Meanwhile in orbit, Captain Archer of the Enterprise tries to deal with the Arconians. Arconian. I I I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. I'm not trying to do that uh, on purpose. But, um... What was my thoughts in this episode? Well, honestly, I gotta say, I liked it in the fact that sometimes in Trek, they will always have, like, a idea of, like, say... Well, there was always episodes, like, say, two different races uh, coming together to work together. And... Or, like, working together for, like, one goal and all that. And I thought it did a pretty good job. And... It was... Pretty entertaining, and the fact that it's like you know, like, you know, like in some shows, like where, like, oh, two rivals, two different cultures, and all that, but eventually they become friends, and all that. It was basically like that, and honestly, it works pretty well. Honestly, I thought it was done fairly well, honestly, and the set design for it, for it went on the moon plant. It's fairly minimal but i think it all works and the fact that we also have the ability that uh tucker is able to learn a language without really having to use of a translator so he's just having to use his um in a way uh um ingenuity we would say but i mean overall i could say this episode was pretty good. Be another ten minutes of sunshine, and we'd have been cooked. Tarat Ash. I thought you said the UT was working. I believe you promised me some Tarat Ash. Ah, oh, you mean that? I liked it. Let's look at the episode, next episode, which is episode Stigma. <laughs> And what happened in this episode? Well, in this episode, it is revealed that Subcommander Sapol has a gener degenerative disease, Panor Syndrome, contracted from her undesired mind meld in the episode Fusion. She must face being ostracized by Vulcan society and losing her position on Enterprise. Basically, sort of like the allegory for this episode was uh, the, like, AIDS in a way, and, um, thing about this episode was came out in 2003, so, um, originally in Next Generation there was an episode that dealt with the AIDS crisis, but that episode was not, not done, so it would go on to be an ep like a story in one of the Star Trek fan series. So, um, honestly, I gotta say, this episode is done pretty well, like the story of it, and that it's like I'd say that you know the you know usually when it comes to the idea of the mind meld, it's usually like say, okay, we're both going to this is a connection, and we're going to try to understand each other, 
but at the same time, I don't really feel, I know, like, in the past when it comes to Trek, was there ever, like, a other character that was, had gotten Panair syndrome from mind melding? Because I don't think that would ever happen in the original TOS. I could totally be wrong. I mean, because I think, I'm thinking about it. Spock really did mind meld people a lot. And, yeah, I mean, thinking about it at the same time, this happens uh, many centuries before Spock, um, Kirk, and all of them. So, who's to say Vulcan culture changed and they were able to figure out a cure for the disease? No rules telling you to oppress minorities. You'd rather let them spread their infections. That's exactly why you're being recalled. No, I'm being recalled because you're afraid of anything that doesn't conform to your idea of acceptable behavior. There is nothing abhorrent about the way we lead our lives. We? There is no simple definition of intimacy. Those of us capable of mind melts are no different than you are. Perhaps it does, like, later in the season. And I gotta say, as like, a story for Dr. Phlox, it works in the fact that it shows him as a doctor is willing to do anything he can to help out his, um, like his, like the one, like his patients. He, he's not willing to say, hey, he's not one to like, go like say, hey, um, you have an illness and all that. Like, he's not willing to, he's not wanting, he's not judging them. Because he was like, say, oh, hey, like different cultures and all that. And I think it's done pretty well, honestly. And then because we also see different perspectives of Vulcan culture and that we don't always know, like say, hey, like uh, how Vulcans will always disagree with other things and their society. But let's go ahead and look at the final episode of this video we're gonna be looking at, which is episode Cease Fire. On this episode, Archer attempts to negotiate a ceasefire between the Ardonians and the Vulcans. And honestly, I gotta say this episode was done pretty well. I gotta say, I still kind of like the characters of the Endorians. They're a pretty cool race. Honestly, they have a visually good, great look. Have you ever known a Vulcan who wouldn't lie to get what he wanted? There is another option. Someone I've dealt with. A pink skin. He's proven to be quite even-handed in dealing with Vulcans. His name is Archer. And that also, um, we get to see for one, like, for once they say, Hey, uh, Archer, you help us out. Help us out now, please. And at the same time, I mean, then again, and the series of Enterprise, we know, like, say, this is the very early days of the, um, uh, the galactic, uh, all that stuff. And uh, I'm sorry, my mind just had a mind fart. So, yeah. Um,. Basically, it's still the early days, like, you know, like, all the, like, the Vulcans, like, say, they're high, they are very, they know what they need to do, and at the same time, they know how, they have ways of being like, this is how things should be run. And they are still, at the same time, they are also sneaky individuals, too, like, being like, say, no one shall figure this out, kind of deal. And honestly, at the same time, we also have a character who is under Shrom, um, and he is, and she is basically just trying to, in a way, um, get him harmed so that, like, say, the Andorians can cause a war between the Vulcans because she feels like, say, they're, uh, views are not being fully um done and at the same time like he is willing to say hey 
maybe we should at least do this um, peacefully instead of like all out war. Join me. A drink to celebrate our mutual dissatisfaction. Vulcans don't drink. But this occasion merits an exception. And I like that. I like the fact that the Andorians are willing to work with Archer and all that. So it works out pretty well, I, I think. So, I mean, overall, I get to say these episodes are all pretty good, honestly. I like all of them pretty well. But what are your thoughts on these three episodes? See you later.